We have a million questions for you. Um, and some have, of course, started in the panel. I would love to know what these techniques are that you've told Catherine in terms of bribing her son to take his medication. No, it, it's not bribing at all, but I'm very strict on the idea of handing control over to the adolescent. I look after spectrum of patients from near birth to very old age. So I have a rather unusual practice. So I look after young children, I see their parents, I see the angst that parents go through, just as has been described. And then I have a very large cohort of children that I've known since they were infants, who are now in their late teens and early 20s, who are just starting to come to see me by themselves without mummy and daddy there. So I think it's really important that they understand what's wrong, not what mum and dad have told them all these years, not taking a puff because mum wants them to take it, but they need to understand what's going on with their health. So I go through the history with them, I do the tests, explaining to them what the tests are about, showing them their lung function, explaining what that is measuring and what it's showing us, and talking to them about the medication. I mean, there's a lot of mythology out there about what asthma medication is going to do to you. Now, you know, you all have horror stories because you grew up in the age before we had excellent topical therapy. And part of the horror of the diagnosis of asthma was that people who knew anyone with asthma knew sort of stunted, hairy, overweight people because they'd been on oral steroids, you know. That's virtually a thing of the past now with relatively uncomplicated asthma if it's treated properly. I mean, and treated properly means correct diagnosis, preventative measures when they're applicable, and then a good asthma management plan. And that is multifactorial as well. You need something to treat an acute asthma attack, and you need preventive therapy if it's appropriate, and you need a plan of what to do in an emergency, as well as understanding your triggers and knowing what you can do about avoiding or minimising them. So, it's a holistic approach and that takes time and that's the problem because these days unfortunately with our health system most GPs don't have the luxury of spending that amount of time with a young person to go through all that. I suppose as a specialist with a referral practice I have that luxury in inverted commas at least with some of my patients and hopefully you build up a rapport during that hour or so that you're going through all this and then you um, you bring them back for review to see how things are going. Now, with that approach, most will start to want to take control for themselves. Hopefully, you've done it. And then the Asthma Foundation is a fantastic backup because you can then refer them to something that's non-medical, but they can then connect with other people with a similar problem that's to be managed. It's not going to rule their lives, but it's something that with knowledge and proper guidance with treatment, they can manage and not have these awful stories.